as I went around, guys, I noticed that the section where most people had questions were this top section right here. The top section, just all you need to do is match the units of measurement to um, the topic here. So if we're looking at this section here, I guess the directions weren't very clear. But all you need to do is match this side to this side. Okay. So if we have force or uh, workforce, what is, what's, what's the unit of measurement for force? Newtons, yeah. So that's going to go right there, A newtons. Let's look at velocity. What's the measure for velocity? Meters per second. There it is right here. So it's going to be 8 meters per second. How about for small p? I had a lot of questions about what's the difference between the small p and the big p. We just got done working, guys, on our last unit of small p. Remember, small p equals mv. So what is that? Momentum. Good. So we know that is this, 8 kilograms meters per second. Oops, that should be times meters per second. Uh, H, height. What's height measured in? Meters. 8 meters. Work or energy. What's energy measured in? Joules. Fantastic. 8J. And then finally, big P is power. We haven't gotten to power yet, but obviously it's going to be the last one that's there, 8W. What do you think W stands for? Not work. When you look at a light bulb, what's that measured in? Watts. Good. All right. So if we're looking, let's go down, or let's move over to this section here. You need to match these five terms with the A, B, C, D, or E. So let's look at kinetic energy. What is kinetic energy? C, energy of motion. Good. I will agree with that. Potential energy. Good. Energy of position. You got it. Work. Nope. Work is A. Force times distance is A. Fantastic. Joules. D. And finally, the last one. Height is how far above the ground an object is. All right. So that was just matching again. So any questions on those two sections? All right, going through then. Potential energy or kinetic energy. All you need to do is look at the scenarios. Tell me if it's exhibiting potential or kinetic energy. So if a car is traveling 45 miles per hour, kinetic. So I'm just going to write a K there. All right, that's the energy of motion. A rock is on a ledge five meters high. Potential. Anytime there's a height involved. Remember, mass times gravity times height is potential energy. So therefore, it's going to be P. A car is resting on top of a hill. Potential. Anytime it mentions height, it's potential. A ball is thrown into the air and is still moving? Kinetic. Good. A ball is rolling on the ground? Kinetic. Fantastic. Nice job. So questions on those? All right, let's move over here. Circle the one with more potential energy. So a 25 kilogram mass or a 30 kilogram mass on top of a hill. Mass times gravity times height. So therefore, the one with the higher mass is going to have uh, more potential energy. A car on the top of the hill or at the bottom of the hill? Car on the top of the hill. It's got an elevation. It's got a height. A plane on the ground or a plane in the air? Plane in the air. In a full plane or an empty plane, both are flying? Full. It's got more mass. All right. So questions on those? All right. Fantastic. Let's scroll down here. Next section is circle the one with more kinetic energy. What is the formula, guys, for kinetic energy? Who can remind me? Good. So kinetic energy equals, oops, not 1 over m. <laughs> 1 half mv squared. Good. So a 25 kilogram mass or a 30 kilogram mass moving at 5 meters per second. 30 kilogram, because there's a mass in there in the equation. Uh, two 10 kilogram masses, one going 75, one going 45. Going 75, it's got a higher velocity. A car at rest or a car rolling down the hill. Car rolling down the hill. And a heavy bike or a light bike. Well, obviously a heavy bike has more mass, so that's going to fit in right there. So a heavy bike. 
So any questions with that? All right. Let's look at some of these math problems. So it says calculate the potential energy of a five kilogram object sitting on a three meter ledge. Potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. So we're given everything we need. Mass is five. I'm going to use 10 for gravity to make the math easier. Times three. So therefore, five times 10, five times 10 is 50. 50 times three is 150 joules of potential energy. All right. Any questions with that one? All right, I'm going to move down the, uh, the column here. So a rock is the top of a 20 meter tall hill. The rock has a mass of 10 kilograms. Uh, what is the potential energy? So again, potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. We are given a uh, mass of 10, gravity is 10, height is 20. So what does that come out to be? 2,000. So that's 2,000 joules of potential energy. So you're noticing, guys, that these formulas are a lot easier than the formulas that we were using last unit, particularly the conservation of momentum formula. These are pretty simple. All right, next one. A 25 Newton uh, object is three meters up. How much potential energy does it have? So it says, hint, notice the units of the object. <laughs> so if we want potential energy, remember, guys, mass always has to be in what unit for these formulas? For mass? Kilograms. All right, so we have to convert this into kilograms by dividing it by 9.8. We'll divide it by 10 just to make it a little bit easier. So therefore, the mass is going to be about 2.5 kilograms. So now we have mass of 2.5. We have gravity of 10. We have a height of 3. So it pretty much comes out back to multiplying 25 times 3 back to our original. Works out that way. Um, so we are going to have 25 times 3 is going to be 75 joules. All right. Questions with that? All right, next one. How high up is a 3 kilogram object that has 300 joules of energy? This one's a little bit different. It's giving us the amount of joules. It's giving us the energy. So we have 300 is equal to 3 times 10 times h. So that we are left with 300 equals 30h. H is going to equal what? 10. Good. 10 meters. So any questions with those ones in that column? All right, let's move over to this column. It says, now we're finding kinetic energy. So kinetic energy equals 1 half mv squared. So a 4 kilogram rock is moving at 10 meters per second. Find the kinetic energy. So we are left with 10 squared is uh, 100. 1 half of 4 is 2. So it comes out to be 200 joules of kinetic energy. Questions? All right. Next one, an 8 kilogram cat is running at 4 meters per second. How much kinetic energy does it have? 1 half mv squared. The cat weighs 8. It's moving at 4. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 4 is going to come out to be what? 64 joules of kinetic energy. So again, you're seeing, guys, if you can do one, you can do them all. A rolling ball is 18 joules of kinetic energy, and it's rolling at 3 meters per second. Find its mass. Well, this one, it's giving us the energy. We're trying to find the mass, and it's moving at 3 meters per second. So we are going to do, technically comes out to be 4.5 m. 3 squared is 9. Half of 9 is going to be 4.5 equals 18. Mass comes out to be 4. All right, 4 kilograms. Questions with that? All right, two more to go. 4 kilogram bird has 8 joules of kinetic energy. How fast is it flying? So we have, it's giving us the kinetic energy. It's giving us the mass of 4. We have to find the velocity. This one, I guess, technically would be the toughest one. Still not that difficult. So we have 8 equals 2v squared. What do we have to do with the 2? Divide it out. 4 equals v squared. How do we get rid of the square sign? Square root it. So if we take the square root of this side and the square root of that side, we get v is equal to 2 meters per second. All right. And the last one, we haven't gotten into work yet, but works very simple, guys. It's force times distance. So 25 times 6 comes out to be what? 
150 joules of work. All right. So any questions with those? All right, lovely.